Sabrina and Daphne looked at each other knowingly. They suspected that this baby brother of Red's wasn't really a relative, but a child she and Jabberwock had stolen. They had found a crib and baby toys in Red's hiding place once, but who the child was or where he might be now was still a mystery. Yes, Granny lied, he's perfectly safe. Good, Red said. Your turn. You said that there was a man in your grandma's house, Robin Hood said. Who was he? Which one? Gray looked shocked. I'm confused. Are you saying there were two men in your grandmother's house? Red nodded. One was the doggy. One was the man. This is pointless, Sabrina whispered to her grandmother. Even if she does remember what happened, she is so confused. How can tr- how can we trust anything she says? Granny nodded reluctantly. I'm afraid I agree. Perhaps we should go. Will you come and visit me again? The little girl asked. Sabrina cringed to the idea of making another visit to the motherless ever after. We'll try, Granny said. In the meantime, you work on feeling better. Tell the dog I said hello, Red said. Once outside, Nurse Spread set down her sandwich and went to walk on the various logs and boats that kept Red inside and safely away from another, from others. When Sabrina had calmed down, she noticed something in Robin and Little John's faces. What? she asked. Something isn't adding up here. Robin said. She spoke of cages. It might not mean anything, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't look into it. I think we need to go see our furry friend again. I'm guessing there's a secret locked inside the cage in his head, and we need to get it out. Uncle Jake dropped the lawyers, his mother, the girls, and Bartle off at the jailhouse, saying he needed to get back to the mirror and keep track of Goldilocks. Elvis also needed to be fed and let out of the house. Little John assured Jake he would keep the family safe. Bottle was offended by this and claimed he didn't need the big man's help. Nottingham is never going to let us see Mr. Cash again, Daphne said. Robin Hood smiled. I think that's something my strong friend can remedy. Little John grinned. Finally, it's about time we started having some fun. The big man walked over to a trash can, hefted it off the ground, and tossed it across the street and through the front window of a jewelry store. An alarm rang out that seemed to shake the hair, uh, the air around Sabrina's ears. I suggest we hide, Robin said. The family and their lawyers hurried around the corner of the jailhouse and ducked down behind some bushes. Seconds later, they watched Sheriff Nottingham rush out of the building and across the street. He glared at the broken window and then dashed inside the store. Let's go, Robin said. The family raced inside the jailhouse and closed the door. John, I believe we might need the princess, Robin said. Little John nodded. I believe you're right. I'll bring her back as soon as I can, but you know how she gets. If there's a hair of a place, you sh- she refuse to come. I'm sure you can persuade her, Robin replied. The big man grinned. My pleasure. Moments later, he was gone. The group hurried back to the jail cells. Cancel was slumped in the corner of his, breathing hard and tending to wounds he had suffered at the hands of the cold soldiers. He looked tired, though Sabrina kept her distance. A tired big bad wolf was still more dangerous than anything else known to man. Why have you come? He said when he saw the family. We spoke to the child, Granny Rodder said. You are wasting your time, Candace growled. Can't you see your efforts are for nothing? Even if I wanted my freedom, I can't and Nottingham would never allow it. If we don't prove your innocence, they are going to put you to death, Robin said. So be it, Kenneth sniffed. You cannot prove the innocence of a guilty man. Everyone was quiet until Robin broke the silence. Still, I believe we have a legitimate defense that needs to be explored. 
you and the wolf are two separate beings sharing the same body. If that's true, then we have to prove that you are in control when you are the wolf. To do that, we need to know exactly what happened that day. Canis shook his head. Come on, Mr. Canis, Daphne said. Now you can at least answer some questions. Fine, Canis said. What do you want to know? What do you remember? Robin asked. Canis sat quietly for a long time and sighed. Nothing. Granny Rhoda's face turned red and she angrily waved her finger at the old man. Mr. Canis, you better start talking right now or I swear I'll... I'll... Well, I don't know, but you won't like it. Rhoda, I have no recollection of that day or any before it, Canis said. When I am the wolf, I only see tiny moments, like snapshots of events. I remember the blood. I hear someone screaming, but nothing is clear. When I am Canis, I only know that something terrible has occurred. Red Riding Hood mentioned that she saw cages in her grandmother's house when she arrived that day. She says you were one of them, Robin said. Canis shook his head. The child has an imagination. I wouldn't take what she says too seriously. The things the wolf did that day, it was too much for a little girl to see. The damage I have done to that poor child's mind is inexcusable. Just then, there was a terrible, a terrific racket in the hallway. Sabrina gasped, fearing that Nottingham had returned. But when she, the fl- door flew open, she saw little John, who was carrying a woman in a blue dress over his shoulders. The woman was holding a miniature pug in her hands. The little dog barked and snapped frantically. Here she is, boss, little John said. John, you put me down this minute, she cried. I am royalty, you know. I've never been so offended in my life. Robin approached the duo and looked up into the woman's face. Hello, princess. Robin, so help me if your lumbox doesn't put me down this instant. Of course, Robin chuckled. You can set her down, John. Little John eased the princess to her feet as she complained bitterly about how he had wrinkled her expensive dress, her expensive gown. When the woman was finished straightening her dress and looked up, Sabrina recognized her immediately. Her name was Beauty, though many people knew her because of her famous husband, the Beast. The duo were like night and day in appearance. She was a devastatingly attractive woman. He who was a horrible nightmare with fur, yellow eyes, and tusks creeping out of his mouth. Sabrina had had a few run-ins with the couple already, and she knew the beast was a member of the Scarlet Hand. What the beauty had joined as well, Sabrina didn't know. Who are they doing here? Beauty asked, alarmed. These are my clients, Robin said. And they are in need of some special talent. The little pug sniffed the air and yipped. The poor creature was wearing a little black doggy tuxedo with a pocket square that matched his owner's dress and a tiny top hat. Hush, Mrs. Mr. Wiggles, Beauty said, and turned her attention to the crowd. Mr. Wiggles is not happy. She proceeded to kiss the dog and speak to him in baby talk for several minutes. Boss, I don't think we've got a lot of time, little John said. Nottingham will be back when he gets bored. Good point, Robin said, and then turned to Beauty. Princess, we need to hypnotize someone so we can ask you some questions. Beauty craned her neck to see into the cell. Her eyes grew wide and she shook her head. Robin Hood, you've lost your mind if you think. You're the only hope we have, Robin said. But that's the... We know, but your husband was just as wild as the wolf when you met him. You know the kind of effect you have on savages. If I thought we could get the information any other way, I would. Beauty stepped up to the cell and looked inside. Mr. Wuggles did the same and whined. Oh boy, the princess sighed. What you going to do? Sabrina asked. Beauty turned to her. I calm down animals, even put them in hip- into hypnotic states. I guess you could say I'm the monster whisperer. Beauty turned back to the cage. 
Okay, pal, I'm going to come in there, but you have to promise not to eat me. Kenneth nodded. Little John raced to the cell door with a set of keys. Nottingham ran out of here without them. The cell door swung open. Beauty shoved her dog into Sabrina's arms and stepped inside. Close the door, she said, and lock it, Kenneth added. Little John did as he was told. Beauty sat down on a crude chair next to Kenneth. Well, are you ready to get started? Kenneth looked at Granny Rhoda with an expression of doubt. For me, old friend, Granny said. Kenneth nodded. Beauty rested her hand on Kenneth's muscular arm. All at once, the tension in the old man seemed to dissolve. His body relaxed, and the wild animal scent that filled the room disappeared. The anger and hate in Kenneth's eyes were replaced with a calm, almost sleepy expression. Feel better? the princess asked. Kenneth nodded. What do you want to know? Beauty asked the lawyers. Ask him to describe what happened the night Red Riding Hood's grandmother died. Robin replied. Oh, that's going to be so gross, Beauty complained. She pointed at Sabrina. You cover Mr. Woggle's ears. He's very sensitive. I don't want him hearing this. Sabrina did her best, though the dog refused to cooperate. Instead, he squirmed in Sabrina's arms until he was facing her and proceeded to lick every inch of her face. Okay, big guy, Beauty said to Kenneth. I want you to hear my voice only. You will see only what I ask you to see. And though what you might see will be shocking, it won't bother you at all. In fact, it will be like you are watching a movie. Okay. Kenneth said, as he and he closed his eyes. Let's go back in time. I want you to go back to one night in particular, as it was the night you met Little Red Riding Hood. Are you there? Yes. Good. Tell me what you see and hear. Kenneth shook his head. It's fuzzy. I can't make out anything. Concentrate, BT said. Try to bring it into focus. Candace's body went into convulsions. His head swung back and forth violently. He's fighting me, Beauty told the crowd. Keep trying, Little John replied as he nervously watched the door for Nottingham's return. It doesn't work like that, Beauty snapped. It's not a matter of trying harder. His brain opens up or it doesn't. There's something he doesn't want to tell me. Suddenly, Candace relaxed. I'm running. Where to? Beauty asked. There's a tiny house in the woods. Do you see anything else? Beauty asked. Light is blinding me and the trees are leaning over, he said. He's talking crazy like a red, Sabrina whispered to her grandmother. Why are the trees leaning over? Beauty asked, ignoring Sabrina's comment. Kenneth shook his head. The wind is incredible. I'm pounding on the door. I want him to follow me, but he's afraid. Who is afraid? Beauty repeated. Kenneth was silent. I can't see him anymore. I'm inside the house. The old woman is there. The child is crying. Are you talking about Red Riding Hood? Beauty asked. Kenneth nodded. Then there's wind. So much wind. Beauty turned to the lawyers. Is any of this making sense to you? Robin shrugged. Ask him if he sees any cages. Beauty repeated the question and for a long moment, the old man was silent. Then he nodded. Yes, cages, he said. Something is in one of them, but the wind is so strong, I can't see it. It's some kind of a horror of animal. It's out. It's coming at me. Can slow a horrible scream that startled everyone. His eyes flickered open and he looked at Beauty. Who's that playing around my head? He growled. The princess fell backward and that seems to be the end of this video. I'll see you later. Goodbye.